Welcome to Exodus 32. Today, verses 25 and 26. Uh, Moses went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments and all of God's law. There was five or six chapters of that. He comes down and the people have created a golden calf. And uh, Moses has come down out of the mountain now. The tablets are broken. Uh, the calf has been destroyed. The idol there. And now he's confronted Aaron. He's confronted Aaron and Aaron's come up with nothing but just ridiculous argument. Now let's look at verses 25 and 26. Now when Moses saw that the people were out of control, for Aaron had let them get out of control to be a derision among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered together to him. He turns from Aaron now and he's going to deal with the people. And things still aren't, you know, fully in order yet. And so there's still some chaos happening around the camp. Let's think about this text for a minute. The people were out of control. Why? Why were they out of control? Because the leader, Aaron, let that happen. He caused it to happen. The leader could have done something very different and prevented it. Aaron let them get out of control. Aaron had a yielding spirit. And today, a lot of people in leadership have a yielding spirit. I, all of us who at different times are engaged in leadership uh, have things come to us that would be easier to just let it flow and let it go on. And so we have to resist sometimes having that yielding spirit. There's a book I read from sometimes that sort of goes over some of this background. And uh, from page 323, I want to just read to you an item I, I, that I agree quite fully with. It's talking about Aaron in this case. If Aaron had had courage to stand for the right, irrespective of consequences, he could have prevented that apostasy. If he had unswervingly maintained his own allegiance to God, if, if he had cited the people to the perils of Sinai, if he had warned the people and reminded them of their covenant with God to obey his law, the evil would have been checked, but his compliance with the desires of the people and the calm assurance with which he proceeded to carry out their plans emboldened them to go to greater lengths in sin than they had before entered their minds. So this author is saying to us, and I might have paraphrased part of it there, but roughly those words, this author is saying to us that the people probably didn't even plan to go quite this far, but when, when Aaron was very calm, and when Aaron went ahead and said, okay, we're gonna do this and this, and we're gonna do that and make this, we're gonna call a feast to the Lord. When Aaron got all that stuff going on, uh, the people were led to go to much greater lengths and you could imagine people probably would be, wouldn't they? If the, you come to the leadership with this kind of edgy proposal, we, we all kind of in the back of our mind, we know what's wrong, and the leader says, oh, no problem, let's do it this way, da-da-da, and we'll do this, we'll adapt this, and we'll do this, and we're going to make a feast to the Lord, and so on. You could see where some people might say, oh, Oh, yeah, we're doing fine. We're in, we're in a good good space. In fact, let's take it even further. And I believe that Aaron, indeed, his reaction uh, where he negotiated, he negotiated over God's truth with these people. That was wrong, just utterly wrong. The Ten Commandments were very plain, just in, uh, just exceedingly plain. We're not making any idols, period. There's, there's nothing even remotely like that. And so when Aaron went along with this, the people must have gone and lost their minds even further than it ever. So this had never had to be this way. This is a reflection on the people. This is actually a bigger reflection on Aaron. Aaron, this is failed leadership at the topmost level. And that's what we get to see here. The leader, because the leader absolutely crunched it on this, the people came in a great apostasy and the whole people were almost destroyed. So here we have another indicator of the, the urgency, the necessity of clear-minded, truly spiritual, unyielding, faithful type leadership in, among God's people. Did you notice that Moses said that the result of this would be to make God's people a derision among their enemies? Did you notice that? That's an interesting piece too, because the enemies of God are watching, they're looking, they're seeing, they see, you know, this, this group did this, this group did this, this group did this. Oh, and this is God's group. What did they do? And they're looking in more closely. And when God's people do something that's haywire, why that creates all kinds of problems. It sends a, a very mixed message out into the world. And so we don't want that. So the result of this apostasy was to uh, create, make God's people, make the people that aren't God's people kind of laugh at them. Look at these people. 
they've been led out here into the wilderness. Supposedly, the God of heaven has delivered them, but now they're now they're going to be destroyed by him. What a what a bunch of crazy bunch of people. And so the behavior of God's people here is completely unconscionable. And then we have this statement here, standing in the gate of the camp. Moses says, it says he's standing in the gate. Whoever's on God's side, come to me. And there's some intense stuff coming up in days to come here. But what we have here is Moses now is calling for decision. He's taking control. He's taking leadership again. And we're looking now for the people who did not go with this because there were a whole tribe that didn't go with this. And we'll see that tomorrow. So there were some that were full of apostasy and expressing that apostasy. But now we're going to come to a moment of truth. And so um, all is not lost. God is on his throne. God's servant Moses is doing the work of a prophet here, leading God's people. And uh, we're still in the middle of this. Let's see what happens some further on tomorrow morning.